code without tests eventually becomes impossible to test. That's hard to hear, but it's true. You know the story. You start with simple code, skip the tests because it's obvious you don't have time, then you keep having features, fix bugs, refactorings. A few months later, or even years, you start looking at your code and you realize it's impossible to test it. And most developers might think that to write that testable code, they need to learn a ton of things, a ton of techniques, frameworks, uh, patterns, a ton of, of stuff. But the reality is that you don't need to learn so many things. The only thing that you need to do is to know a small set of principles and keep that in mind today when you are writing code that will be tested in the future. Yes, this is not a video to advocate for DDD as I usually do, so you might want to, to do that. But if you don't, here goes my four principles to make sure that you can write testable code. I call these principles the mind principles. Funny part, you need to keep that in mind while coding in order to save you in the future. So the M stands for minimize side effects, functions that behave predictably every time. The I stands for isolate dependencies, code that doesn't depend on external services. N stands for narrow responsibilities. Each piece does one job exceptionally well. And D stands for define explicit behaviors. No mystery when you are looking to the code, you know what to expect. So if you master these four principles, you will be writing not only code that is testable, but also code that is maintainable. It's easy to debug, it's easy to diagnose, it's easy to evolve. Before we dive in, if you want to see these principles in action with real code examples and hands-on exercises, I have a full course about it at Dome Train. It helps a ton of people, the feedback is amazing, and you can find it at Dome Train. The name of the course is From Zero to Hero, Writing Testable Code with C Sharp. But for now, let's break down each principle so you can start applying them today. Think of your functions like a chef following this a recipe. If you will use always the same ingredients, you will always produce the same dish. And the cool thing is that that dish, cooking that dish, will not affect other stations, okay? The other stations might change something, but that part, that part of the recipe, that ingredient, will stay the same. So there's no impact on the ones around you. And that takes us to the idea of side effects. Side effects is when you have functions that change things outside of their scope or depend on an even state. For example, pure functions are exactly the opposite thing. They always have the same input. They will always produce the same output. No changes based on external factors. So side effects are like even problems in your tests, okay? They might change something. Functions that will change the behavior without you understanding what is happening. Tests that become unpredictable. So your functions are like um, an experiment in a controlled laboratory. So you control all the variables and you will always get predictable results every single time. So if you ask yourself, does this function do anything other than compute and return a result? If yes, can I refactor it to minimize that? With minimal side effects, testing becomes trivial. Uh, it's always the same input, same output every single time. While some fancy restaurants might have their own farms, they usually don't control every single thing from the production. They will not produce wine, for example. They will not have a, a bakery, maybe. So most of the restaurants avoid all of those things in the chain. What they do instead is that they work with suppliers. And if, the, for example, the bread supplier changes, the restaurant doesn't reveal its own kitchen. They just receive bread through the same delivery system. Maybe it's the same delivery company taking the bread to them. The dependency problem is when code directly creates, for example, database connections, file access, API calls. This creates a testing nightmare. Why? Because you need those connections just to run your tests. So instead of your code reaching out to grab those dependencies, have them delivered like a room service. Pass dependencies in from the outside, production uses real services and tests 
use controlled fakes, things that are simulating the behavior of the real thing. So you can think about your code like a, a lamp is an idea that I like to use. It basically doesn't care if it's plugged into the wall or into a battery pack. It just needs power through a, a standard interface and it will work. That's the idea. This small change will transform testing because it will replace the slow and unreliable external services with something that is fast and is predictable, a predictable test double. With those test doubles, now you can run your tests offline. They can run in isolation. They can be consistent. It's kind of like if you had to launch every single rocket to the space in order to test it. There are some tests that you can do in a flight simulator, for example. A great baker will focus only on breath, on making the perfect breath. They don't try to be a mechanic, an accountant, a tour guide. They don't want to be any of that. They just need to focus on bread. So if you need to change the bread that you usually consume, you know who you should talk with. Because that specialization will lead to excellence. And that is what we are looking for in source code. That's why professional kitchens tend to organize with specialized roles like the pastry chef or the sommier and the, all of those different things that I don't know most of them. No one tries to do every single thing. And this makes the kitchen, the, the restaurant, more manageable and more efficient. And what does that mean in terms of code? It means that we need to avoid those kitchen sink functions that will validate inputs, calculate results, write to files, send emails, and do other stuff like uh, brewing coffee. Because otherwise, testing such a thing becomes almost impossible. You will need to verify all of those different behaviors at once. If one of them breaks, where do you even start? How do you know what is happening? If you think about it, you have heard about this thing. It's basically the single responsibility. Single responsibility brings a huge benefit. Smaller tests, one responsibility, it's equal to one simple test. If you think about it, that responsibility is one behavior. That makes every single thing easier to debug, for example, to find a problem, the root cause of an issue. Uh, it's better to reuse that code, for example, because now your code is focused on a single task. If you are setting up a ton of test infrastructure or asserting many different things, your code might be doing too much. That's a leading indicator that maybe you are violating this principle. Your code interfaces should be like a restaurant menu. They will list clearly what's available and what you can expect. Customers know exactly what they are ordering. The kitchen can change recipes, but the menu will be a promise of consistency, let's say. If we think about those hidden behaviors, they are kind of like hidden menu items from your menu. Only some people know that they exist. Only if you know the trick to take advantage of them. That's not a good policy. So. Explicit interfaces are like a um, detailed job description. They have a clear requirements, clear deliveries, and implementation meeting the contract can fulfill the role. No surprises or even expectations. Let me use another uh, analogy to make this even more concrete. So think about code like um, a board game with clear rules and you don't want your code to look like an escape room that you don't know where you are heading to. You don't need to unlock a given clue in order to find the next one, okay? So you need to have a, a clear path, a clear expectation, and that is what we are looking for in source code. And why do you want to do that? Because by having those explicit behaviors, now your tests are kind of like filling a checklist. You just want to see that every single uh, scenario can be verified. So remember that the best code isn't clever code. It's code that is predictable. And the mind principles will help you to write that code, that code that is predictable, that is testable, and that is maintainable. You don't need to be perfect and start by keeping these principles in mind during your next coding section. You just need to ask yourself, am I following the mind principles? If you start asking this question, you will see that you'll naturally lean to those.
The mind principles are great if you want to make sure that the code that you write today eventually will be easily testable. But if you want to fast forward that problem, if you want to shift left and start to deal with those principles in the day to day, you can always try test driven development. And I have a video for you if you are curious about it. If you don't want to go with the TDD route and you want to dig deeper into these uh, principles, make sure you take a look into the course. I will link it in the description and I will see you in the next one.